it's just very intriguing. It's like, oh, you've never spoken once on any of your pictures, but you have a million followers. None of these guys know what you sound like. You could sound like a guy. None of these guys know, but the fact that you have an amazing body, a nice bubble butt, and you're wearing some crazy lingerie, you get 10 million likes. Yes, you do. I'm like, yeah, I can't get into it because now that's really what it is for me. You got to show me how you are mentally because Instagram got everybody fooled. The coloring book for adults, a.k.a. Instagram, has everyone fooled. Yo, what is going on here? I don't get it anymore. <laughs> Y'all boys are sick. This is not making any sense to me. How did we get here out of pure boredom? Nothing involved in that. We're not outside. We're not doing anything fun. We're not building. It's not for the culture. I'm bored. Let me get this quick validation off y'all boys real quick and look, dive straight head first, hitting the like button. We got to stop hitting the like button. I think that's maybe what it's going to have to come down to, because if you could just simply post a pic and get damn near 100, 200, 300 likes off doing nothing, nothing at all. We are in a tragic state. We need to put the phones down. We need to get all social media for at least a year because it's not helping the situation. So I don't know where to go with this, because when I see one woman cry and complain about not being able to get a man and then I see another woman putting up her exact opposite of what she's talking about. Yo, just give it to me. Shower me with attention that I'm not going to do anything with because I'm not going to talk and reach out to any of you guys. All of you are saying all the same thing. So it's either an emoji, heart eyes here. It's a yo, what's good here? Come travel with me here. It's all the same tactics, but it's by millions of you. And that's the tough thing. The pond, the pool, the dating spectrum, as you want to call it, is tainted. It's done. It's a wrap. I know I was saying before I wasn't outside. Yo, I'm definitely not outside. Why would I want to waste my time? There's so many things I could be doing. And let's not get that misconstrued. When I say I'm not outside, I mean, I'm not actively dating. I'm not meeting you folks. It's no point. I'm going to stay true to the ones I've known, met, hung out with, keep those conversations cool and copacetic. Let's have cordial, you know, just like good, healthy relationships. But to be outside with y'all, with this mindset, nah, I think I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I'm going to continue to travel. I'm going to continue to try to elevate my life through good reads, good food, good culture, good music. You know what I mean? Like dabbling in the art. Because when it comes to folks out here, I can't tap in. Imagine how many messages she gets a day. And damn, I didn't even intro the pod. What's good with y'all? How are y'all doing? This is the Furious Robinson Podcast. Your curator of conversations, wordsmith aficionado voted most likely to have an amazing first date. And we are here again. What episode would this be? Maybe, whoo, I don't even know. Maybe 38, maybe. That's a good quality guess. If it's not, you'll see me put the exact number up on the screen. But I could be right. I'm probably right. And no, I just say that to say this. When we really look at it, there's no winning in these games. How much attention can the actual mind really take on? Like you get hit up by one dude, two, maybe you can handle that, three. But once you start getting hit up by 100, 200, some of these women, even a thousand dudes, in your DMs, where do you go from that? Your system, your, 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 your just processes has to be off. I couldn't imagine because I get my fair share of it, whatever the case may be. I get hit up by people, but it's definitely not no 100 to 200 to 1,000 people because if, if it was, I wouldn't be searching for it. I'd be tapped out. And I know she is. And whoever's dating her, good luck. I don't know how much you can bring to that situation because right when you do something wrong, it's a wrap for you, cuz. 
She's gone. She's going to tap in with one of those dudes liking all her pictures. That's the only, because that's what you get. You get this inflated ego from that. So any situation you're in, the person has to be perfect because if not, you're going to be thinking you got all these options, but these options are not there. They're very frivolous. They're based in the aspect that you're very attractive, which is fine. She pointed it out in the video, but that goes nowhere. It just doesn't. You can be, and a lot of guys are obviously going to realize that as they start to meet the women that they want to meet. Maybe they're going to elevate. Maybe they're going to meet these very attractive women. Then you're going to realize they're just like all the cool other, not so attractive, maybe average women as the person would say, you know, but I'm like, Psh. sometimes these women personalities be A1, sometimes not. It doesn't really matter how you look is what I'm getting at. You could be very attractive and a two personality. You could be a two and have a 10 personality and just be with it's vibey, good energy, all the different things. So it just depends on what you like. But I did want to speak on this video because the title of this video, I think we're going to see, but it's going to be called Winter is coming. The holidays are here, folks. And if you don't know what that means, that means as it gets time to get a lot, you got to pick up the jacket. You got to start putting on them big coats because I live on the West Coast. I'm good. It's going to be summer here, fall here year round. We don't get true seasons. But you, for you folks in the Midwest, the Northeast, yeah, even up, up here, up north, you go into them cold ass places, Toronto, Vancouver. Yeah, you're going to want to cuddle. That's a fact. And when you can't find that right guy to cuddle up with, you keep running into these lames, these clowns, as I like to say, hey, good luck, because winter is coming. It's not a game. Play with it if you want to. Keep having all these wild standards and expectations, which you can have. That's fine. But winter is coming. Don't sleep. And I just wanted to speak on this video because this girl was saying a lot of different things. And I'm like, yo. I don't know if I could really get jiggy with this one. Like, how do we get jiggy with this one? How do we really break this down and unpack this? Because to her, she's a gift. You know, her presence is a present, right? She's the prize. So let's really see what's good because I'm trying to understand. You know, I refuse to settle. And when people sometimes say, like, do you think your expectations are too high? No. You know why? Because <laughs> I exist. And there's not a chance that I am one in eight billion. Mm. I'm not. I'm self-disciplined. Okay. I'm ambitious. I'm goal-oriented. Okay. I work hard. Okay. And I keep myself healthy okay. and fit and a million other fucking things. All You're the telling things. me that there's not a male version, my male counterpart out there? There has to be. I just refuse to believe Damn. that I have to settle for mediocrity. I <sighs> it's a no for me, dog. <sighs> Damn. She just said, y'all boys is mediocre. Y'all boys is at mid-grade. Y'all boys are not getting her as high as she would like. Y'all got to go back to the lab, change up the formula. It's not working. That butt is not smoking because what are we doing here? And yeah, you just got to speak on it. She's doing too much. I can't hold you. Even if, like, to me, <laughs> it sounds like she's trying to date somebody, like she's trying to date herself. Like, yes, all those things are good to have. You want to be ambitious. You want to be in the gym, taking care of your body, healthy. You want to really be trying to elevate. I say it all the time. But you can't have these expectations for people you don't know and you've never met because everyone is in a different spot on their own journey. So you might get a couple of those traits. You might get a guy that's in the gym, going to church, praying and meditating, but maybe he don't got his financial situation figured out yet. Maybe. Or you got a guy that's just a gung-ho, hard worker, self-starter, extra motivated, going to always give you that positive quote, but he's a little bit lethargic and he likes to eat Cheetos. I don't know. You're never going to meet the perfect guy. And that's what she was explaining. I'm like, oh, we're meeting perfect people out here, ready to go, ready to walk across the altar, ready to have kids, ready to build that family, ready to buy that real estate, that second home, that vacation home. How many people can really get on with this type of time? Not a lot. So one, the tough thing about that is, and it's a double negative because as you see women here, the girl that I posted at the start of the video getting off with 10,000 likes, a lot of those maybe quality men are in her DMs because that's what a lot of women are putting out. So what you're putting out, hey, 
is maybe not, it's not as easy of a battle as maybe what she's putting out. Is that guy's fault? Who knows? I don't know. Because when I see Shorty half naked on the gram, I'm enticed. When I meet a nice, young, intelligent woman, I'm also enticed. But at a certain point, it's going to be something that I don't like to hear. I don't know what that thing is because I haven't run into you. I haven't run into that person in the video, but it's always something. And I'm not saying it's anything like the ick. It's nothing small and minuscule. No, it could be shorty right there in that video. She was cool. I'm not going to lie. Very attractive. But once you start saying all this stuff at like random, like, oh, I, I like this. I do this. You need to do this. You need to do that. If you're not doing this, then it's a timeline on that. It's a due date on this. Be like, yo, chill. We just met. Like, at least let mans get to know you first. I could be a little bit just guarded. You know, sometimes you got to guard your energy. You want to give it to them all first quarter. You got to build. She seems like she's ready to go. Like, she seems like she just got out of a date, like seven year, seven year relationship, long, got engaged, and then got divorced. Like, like just something went left. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell when somebody was ready to, ready to go all the way, and now they're back in the dating pool. So it's like, damn, they just kind of stuck here. They don't know what to do. No, this can't be it. You better go back to that guy for sure. Because I'm not even going to say she didn't sound jaded. She just sounded like she was right there, like a dude was giving her everything she wanted. Lawyer, making 400K a year, out of debt, talking to his family, keeping everything healthy in the situation. They were going to yoga on the weekends, going bike riding at the Golden Gate Bridge, all the things that you want to do in your relationship, all the cool things, going to the hookah spot, the shisha spot, late night dancing to some reggaeton and bachata. Yeah, quality relationship. And then it went left. Who knows why it went left? But she's on TikTok and subtly, in disguise, she's saying it went left. And now her expectations of you and you Oh, it's a wrap. You better live up to it. You better be motivated, six pack, six figures, ready to go, meditating and praying every night. Hip flexors healthy because you're going to yoga. Namaste, right? You got to live up to all these expectations. We're not going to make it. We're just not. I have no optimism for where the dating's. I used to. I used to be like, yeah, the dating spare is going to reset. Things are going to be good. <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore. Every time I see one of these videos, I'm like, y'all are learning nothing from these videos. That's why I'm like, yo, this is based in satire. Take it how you want it. This ain't advice. If you could do whatever you like with this one, I have no idea. Like, yo, what do I tell somebody to say to that person? There's nothing I would say to that person. And now it's just like, yeah, let's just be friends because you seem to be like more of a motivational speaker for me. So maybe we'll just be like good friends, right? Because it's like, yo, the expectations are ripped. Imagine the expectations in the bedroom. Heesh. <laughs> if that's the expectations day-to-day -day life, imagine when you get in the sheets. Because if she's not wilding in the sheets, if she's not Mia Khalifa, she has to bring that same energy, that same energy that you're bringing into your day-to-day -day life, staying healthy, motivated, elevating, getting to the bag, all this good stuff. If that same energy is not in the sheets, if she's not the Mia Khalifa, Lana Rhodes, whoever you want to name out there, there's so many. <laughs> in the sheets, I am skating. I am out. Leave me alone because you did all that and you didn't live up to it. <laughs> you didn't do it in the sheets and that's really where it be mattering sometimes. I don't know. I'm, I'm around. I'm joking. But it's like, yo, what can you say? You can't do anything. And I just look at it like, yeah, you're not going to find you. And you're not the only woman like you. So that's another thing as well. Some of these quality men that you're speaking to are taken. Yes, they are gone. They're a very small part of the population. The one to five and maybe even 10% of men, either they're off the market or they're dating your friend. That's a fact. You're not going to find these esoteric guys that you keep looking for. When I see all these things online, like this guy did this and this guy did that, there's never anyone saying, damn, I tried to communicate what I really wanted and he didn't give it to me and now I'm here. It's never that. It's never that. It's always, I expected this, I expected that, and I got none of it. Yeah, no, you didn't say it. You didn't actually know how to communicate that in the right way enough to get it.
It's not making any sense anymore. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Stop it. Yo, what are we doing out here? Is this what it's coming to? Is this what the <laughs> is this what men have to compete with? Why is that cat going to town on her neck like that? Why? Why? Come on, help me help us. What are we doing here? This can't be what we're dealing with in the dating spectrum because if that came across my feed, if that came across my for you page, as they say, it's like, yo, I can't. I'm not competing with that. If this cat is giving you hickeys nightly, there's no reason for me. And that's not even my community. There was, <laughs> like, shout out to Shorty, but we would never be in the same room. So it's like, whatever. But it's like, at the same time, when I see this, this is what guys have to deal with. Yo, you can't. We got to chill. I'm not doing it. And this is just is just a larger point to me. And this is my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. When you have pets, when I see women with pets, I'm sorry. This is a hard one for me not to judge. I just feel like those women are sometimes lonely. Like, because I, I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, I understand having a pet. It's cool. You get the companionship. You get the lovey-dovey stuff every time you walk in the house. But it's like, yo. Then it goes to another level. Now the pet is in the bed. Especially the dogs. What are we doing here? And I know I may be offending so many people with this conversation because I know it comes up all the time. But yo, it's very hard for me to bait, date people with pets. That's just a fact. If I'm just actually saying something that's... <laughs> and I don't even know. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm not even going to do it. Shout out to y'all who got pets. But yeah, y'all got to chill. I'd never want to see anything like that again in my life. And let's just speak on it because like I said, winter is coming and the videos, I'm not going to stop showing them because, hey, what are we going to do? We're in the dating spectrum. People are sad. People are mad. Some people are happy. Let's see what's good. So I went on a date last night. Oh, did you? First impression <laughs> was good. He was nice, funny. Like we had banter. It was going well. I just got home. Um, but the problem is this. Everyone is just so... Horny, right? <laughs> like, I think like especially on Hinge, like I've gone on so many first dates and they always just take a sexual turn. Damn. Like we're all horny. Everyone wants to fuck everyone. I get <laughs> it. Like it's human nature. Like kid you not, this guy last night maybe asked me two questions about Damn. my life, my job, my whatever. And then straight up went into every question he had about my sexual preferences. And I make it clear, like, I'm like, we're not having sex. Like, we're not. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I know. Like, we don't have to today. Yo, when you give the, <laughs> when you come back on the screen with the hand on the side of your face, yo, I'm going to let her finish, bro. Stop. I'm like, then why are you asking me if I like getting my face fucked right now? <laughs> yo, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, because women's. I realize, and that's the tough thing with that. Like, even if you are in a cool situation, the person is cool. This is a first date. You meet the person, they're super cool, down to earth. You really sexually attracted to them. That comfort level is still not there, sir. So it's not much you could do in that situation. And she is not lying. People are horny. And that's why the dating pool is so messed up because you have any wild one night stands, two night stands, whatever it is between the span of, one week and four weeks, that's a one night stand. I don't care. All that's looped in together now because it's like women are kind of holding themselves for the perfect guy. They meet that perfect guy in that scenario because this guy has understood like, oh, she likes X, Y, and Z. I'm just going to do X, Y, and Z. Easy. Boom. Knocks it out the park. And now he's on to the next one. He's on to the next game. It's, a, it's the MLB. It's baseball. Like they got 180 games in the season or something crazy. Like you're just one of those games that he's playing. Like, if we're looking at it like that, so, yo, it's a very weird place right now for dating because you have a lot of women. And when I say a lot, a large portion of women are, I don't even know if I want to call it being celibate or becoming more, becoming abstaining from sex. Yes, they're abstaining from sex at a high rate because they're realizing that's all a lot of guys want. I digress. So it's like, I've said that before. So it's like, yo, but I don't think. 
This is just my opinion. I don't think, and this is based in satire. Do not forget, hit the like button, drop a comment, subscribe. Don't let the algorithms box you in. But I don't think celibacy is the way. Celibacy isn't it because it still puts the overarching emphasis on your body. Now, what people don't get, they kind of want more. So by going celibate, hey, Jessica might be celibate, but Tiffany not celibate. So I'm going to just go over to Tiffany and when Jessica get her mind right, I'll come back. And that's how guys I'm assuming are looking at it, right? Because if I can't afford this car, I'm just going to go get the car I can afford. And this is not me saying women are cars. I'm not saying that. I'm just using an analogy for the context of this video. So with that being said, that car is going to depreciate in value over time. Like they say, once you drive it off the lot, the depreciation goes down. Tough. Very tough. So guys are like, okay, I'm going to wait about, I'm going to give you about a year or two to get right and I'll come back. Because they're treating women the same way. It's not like they're going to go above and beyond. You're not going to go outside of your means as a guy. If you can buy $20 flowers for someone, you're going to do it for all the women across the board. If you can buy $100 flowers, you're going to do it for, like, you're not going to buy $120, another one $100. Unless you got a main and side chicks, which I don't encourage. If you got a main one, try to build with her. Leave these side joints alone. But my name Bennett, I ain't in it. I'm just saying guys are going to do things across the board. You got a $50 dinner, you get a $50 dinner. That's just the way it's working, right? That's how I'm looking at it because I see women complaining about the same thing. So I'm assuming guys are using the same strategies. I would assume. But like I said, I like to communicate. I like to have conversations. So with me, the way to dupe me, I would say and assume is by not with your vagina, not with the box, but mentally. If you're mentally engaging and I'm like, damn, I really want to have a conversation with this person. I'm trying to talk. This person is talking about things that I like then I already know off top the chemistry is there and the sex is going to be amazing. But if you kind of like ditzy, a bird brain, you're always talking about random stuff I don't care about, like Fashion Nova or, yeah, just random things. <laughs> and I almost said something from my actual, ha <laughs> y'all almost got me, almost said something from my actual conversation. But yo, if you're saying things that I don't really kind of mess with, I'm just going to be like, oh, whatever, like, that's cool. And I guess I did have this conversation. A woman asked me like, yo, what is post nut clarity? Or what do you think that is? And I'm like, yo, it's not that the guy came to his senses post nut. He already knew what time it was before he knew early. He was like, oh, I'm probably not going to wife her. She's probably not going to be around me long. But yo, I'm very attracted. She has a very nice body, whatever it is. Nice butt. Nice boobs, lips, whatever the thing is for that guy. Did they get post nut clarity or they just wanted to have a good time? Male ego, vices, whatever the case may be. And women do it too. It's all like ego, based in ego. It's a big waste of time, but I'm not giving out any advice. Y'all continue to do that. Once you do it though, make sure you make the, create the TikTok video so I can react to it in real time. That's all it is. Make sure you put the video out there, right? Do it for me. <laughs> if you're not hitting the like button, at least drop a video complaining about your dating life so I can speak on it and at least get the people engaged, right? But nah, yeah, we got to wake up out here because, yo, people are horny. It is what it is. And everybody's using their own kind of strategies to, <laughs> to try to navigate dating. Some people are deleting the apps. Some women are going celibate. Some men are not paying for anything. You have to split the bill. But then when you split the bill, now you're in the friend zone. Or you just getting ignored off top. Like, yeah. How do you date someone who's getting a thousand likes a day? Out of boredom. They're just bored. They're not on an island. They're not traveling. They're not on a yacht. They're not giving out financial advice. They're not in some crazy yoga position. Nope. Just an average photo. Me somewhere in my house taking a flick. Thousand likes. Boop. What do we do? So when I look at it like that, yeah. I've taken a step back and I can't even fault these boys for being overly thirsty and overly horny because what are women kind of putting out into the stratosphere? When I look on my Explorer page, it's wild. And I kind of do it on purpose. Now it's kind of like a, what is it for me? Like, it's like so interesting now for me to see how much 
sexual deviant stuff is on Instagram. Like, it's just wild. Like, I see the wildest things on my Explorer page. Yoga positions. Women with their legs bust wide open. Everything showing. Bent over twerking. Everything. I'm like, yo, I don't even know how good this is for my brain, but I feel fine. I feel like when I talk to women, I still respect them. I still got respect for the women that bring it mentally. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk in real time. Because a lot of that stuff really doesn't affect me. It just doesn't. I've been with and seen a lot of nice women in real time, in person, to where a lot of that is like just internet, just whatever. I'm like, oh, this is, I said it before. It's like sideshow stuff. It's like going to a circus, right? And not to say these women are clowns, but it's just very intriguing. It's like, oh, you've never spoken once on any of your pictures, but you have a million followers. None of these guys know what you sound like. You could sound like a guy. None of these guys know, but the fact that you have an amazing body, a nice bubble butt, and you're wearing some crazy lingerie, you get 10 million likes. Yes, you do. I'm like, yeah, I can't get into it. Because now that's really what it is for me. You got to show me how you are mentally. Because Instagram got everybody fooled. The coloring book for adults, a.k.a. Instagram, has everyone fooled. Stop caping. Stop it. Get offline, man. Stop. All us good guys. Don't be a hypocrite. Come on now. But no. <laughs> He's wilding. But I mean, does he have a point? Are there guys out here doing savage, savage deeds? Yes, there is. But there's also women like that as well out here finessing guys in real time. Yes. So it's on both sides. And the tough thing about it is what he said in that video was not a lot. A lot of women are on their healing journeys. Yes, you heard it here first. When I say women are going celibate, that's them on their healing journeys. When they don't respond back to your hey, highs, how you doings, that's them on their healing journeys. When you see them in the gym, all the time, every day, with every motivational quote, with anything they can find to inspire themselves, that's them on their healing journey. So it's a wrap for y'all boys, because if y'all don't come to the situation healed with all your traumas unpacked, cleared out, it's a wrap. No go. And that's a tough thing, because even though men aren't doing that same thing, men are not asking women to be perfect at all. Because I've tried it back in the day. You try, to, you try to get somebody to change. You see the potential. Now you try to get them to change. And that shit don't work. So <laughs> you, could, <laughs> you could cancel it. I'm not doing it. I'm not even trying to change folks. How you come to me is how you come to me. If you come to me elevated, in a good space, healthy, yeah, we going to build in real time. Because what people are forgetting is that if you're dope, if you're quality, you a five-star Michelin star restaurant, you think people aren't going to want to eat there? You don't think there's going to want to be a line? Like, yeah, there's not a line at Burger King. But you go to that five-star sushi spot with the Japanese chef, there's a line. So people aren't giving away quality people. They're not saying, oh, damn, Amy was amazing. Everything I wanted in her. Good family dynamic. She got two little brothers. She be taking care of them. They be going to play ball. Like she in the hoops. She a Celtics fan on the low. Like all the things you want in a lady. And you just gonna give that up? No. So no, let me break. Let me break it to everyone. No one's gonna come to you exactly how you want them. <laughs> like when have you ever met someone that checked all every single one of your boxes? consistently, wouldn't you now be with this person in some form or fashion, whether it be married, whether it be paperwork, whatever, wouldn't you be around them now? And if you came to them in that same spectrum, as Shorty said, she's not the only one. She's not 8 billion, one of 8 billion or whatever she said. Wouldn't this person be like, okay, cool. Let's wipe her down. Let me hold this down short. But hey, self-awareness is key. If you lack in self-awareness, you're really not going to win out here. That's just a fat guy or girl. It don't even matter. Yeah, what are we doing? Like a healing journey? <laughs> oh, you're going to see. 
Let's break this down. Let's really see what a healing journey is because, yeah, <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. It's just like, yo, we don't get it anymore. We're not making no sense. But hey, let's continue to play these games. Let's get stupid prizes. I'm here for it. Okay, so unpopular opinion here, but I just am not interested in somebody's favorite color, favorite movie, top five travel destinations, shit like that, because I'm currently on a healing journey, which means that interactions with people where yeah <laughs> you heard it here first she's she don't give a fuck about what your color is your favorite food where you went to school none of that none of that come on now platonic or romantic have to be very very intentional meaning you cannot be a trigger for me you cannot there can be nothing about you that sets me back on my journey so I'm asking different questions like, do you know I how can. to articulate your emotions? Do you compartmentalize your emotions? Do you even know what that means and what it looks like? How do you like to receive love? How do you like to oh give my love? God. Like, do you want somebody that's trying to be in your skin or are you somebody that demands space? That's the type of shit I want to know. And you can ask those questions, whether Damn. platonic or romantic. Like your friends are a relationship. You're two different people. Like I, it just blow. I'm not interested in that <laughs> because your top five travel destinations, your five can be different and my five can be different. We don't give a fuck. We'll go to all 10. Yo, hey, winter is coming. Winter is coming. She does not care. She's not here to play with you guys anymore. If you don't come to her with what you and your therapist just talked about in confidence to her, this person you just met as a complete stranger, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Right? Hey, I don't be in these communities. I don't I don't meet these women. I really don't. The women that I meet are very healthy because I like to talk on the phone. And like I said, I'm not meeting none of you strangers. I'm just not. I'm getting on the phone with you. And I know if you can't even make it to a phone conversation, bare bones, a phone conversation, I don't want to meet you. Because if I get on the phone with Shorty and she's talking like, She's essentially ignoring the questions or getting mad that I'm asking the questions or trying to divert the conversation to these very healing aspects of her life, of her life, not my life, because I'm fine. I'm coming to you fine. Like we just have trying to have a cordial conversation. Just what's up? We just met. Can we just talk? Nah, you got to come with that real deal, genuine intention, a five year plan. Yeah, it's not for me. I'm going to pass. I'm sure with my mindset, yeah, after like two or three messages, I'm just going to be like, well, bro, I don't care. I'm going to start doing some work stuff and get distracted and give it a day and whatever. Maybe she'll just talk herself out. Like, yo, it's like it's, there's nothing you can really do in these situations. And it's tough to say, but that person is very jaded. Like she needs to take a whole step back, delete all the apps, stop dating. If you're on a healing journey, journey. Be on a healing journey. Stay over there with the healing journey, right? It's like this, um, there's like this retreat and it's like a seven day retreat in silence. You go up somewhere in the mountains. I know they got it in California a lot. They do a lot of this type of stuff in Cali. So it's a silent retreat. You go into the woods and you're around yourself for seven days. And there's like, there's like maybe like a small cot you know, just a basic, it's, it's very minimalistic, as I'm trying to say right here. That's a healing journey. That's a fucking healing journey. You go into the woods and you can't speak for seven days. You're on this Buddhist kind of community. That's a healing journey. That what I just saw, that ain't no goddamn healing journey. You're still dating. That's just high-ass expectations. That's called standards. Like, I don't get it because you've now turned yourself celibate. That's just a standard. You're not on a healing journey because a healing journey would be self-awareness. That's the healing journey going and being around yourself. But once you continue to be tainted by so much different energies, you met Derek. He was trash. You met Ricky. He was trash. You met Jason. He was extra trash. Now you meet up with a good dude. You meet up with an Anthony, nice quality dude, Italian chef in the city, been working for 10 years, got his own restaurant. He's not going to want to talk to you. He might want to ask you your favorite travel destinations, right? But I digress. 
People are not going to get it until it's too late. Y'all folks going to be out here looking down, bad, and sad. Give it about five years. I already said it. When you see two people that are married, it's going to be a fucking very beautiful thing because that means they figured it out. And not these unhealthy marriages. I be seeing women talking about, they be seeing dudes out here dating and stop putting that out into the universe. Like, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's just a ton of married men outside just dating, ignoring their wives. And if they are, they're not married. They got some type of situation going on. That's something else. But the fact that that's just an assumption, that's just to what you assume. You don't really know their situation. And that's a tough thing. We get in third hand, fourth hand information from a random side joint. The wife already cleared it and it's good to go. It's like, yo, don't be putting your expectations on this man in their marriage. They may have an agreement. Now, if they don't and shorty trying to chase you down, that's different. That's completely different. I'm not speaking to that, but it's just interesting to me as a whole. Shorty says she's on a healing journey and she's not trying to hear anything you are saying. Nothing. I've heard that in different forms, like, oh, don't give him the game plan to your life. You know, don't let him manipulate you. That's a big one. But I've never heard someone actually trying to communicate. And the person was so jaded by their past relationships that they said, no, I've heard about your top five travel destinations. I've heard it. I don't care about you wanting to go to Paris. I don't care about your Hawaii trip. I don't care that you went to Costa Rica. I don't care that you want to go to, I don't care. If you're not telling me how you've healed from your last relationship, I don't want to talk to you. If you're not telling me how you're unpacking your childhood traumas, I'm not saying a word. And this is how women are operating. And I'm like, yo, are y'all, is it this bad out here? (laughs) Like, yo, y'all have to chill. Because a healing journey to me, until you seven days quiet with yourself in the woods, really getting that inner peace, really unpacking your trauma in your mind. Yeah, because a dude taking you out on a $150 date, $200 date, that's not you on a healing journey just because you didn't have sex with him at the end of the night. That's just called standards, right? I don't know. Where we go from here, I really don't know. I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be cordial. I'm trying to tell some jokes. You know what I mean? I'm trying to keep it based in satire. But then I got, I'm like, this ain't serious. This ain't a serious conversation because if I meet you in real time, especially, oh my goodness, could you imagine this person somehow bypasses the phone conversation and now I meet up with you and we're out on a date? This is a date that I leave. I'm sorry. And I've done it before. And women will catch it and they'll just change tunes. (laughs) Yeah, if you start doing something I don't like, bro, if the energy isn't good, I'm not hanging out. Like, it's just not friend, relationship, whoever. If I don't feel like being outside and the energy isn't good, taking my ass home. My home is better. I actually like being in my house. I was watching a movie last night and this is completely off topic, but why not? I know how to bring it back. I was watching a movie last night and I was like, damn, this is a big ass TV. It was in my house. I was like, damn, I don't even watch TV enough. I'm outside trying to hang out with y'all. I don't even feel good. I just want to sit here, watch a movie, chill. So that's what I'm, I say that to say this, yo, you're going to be in a lot of different situations with jaded and tainted people. Once your gut instinct says, leave, go home. I don't feel good. That's what you should do. The person may be a little bit salty. They may be questioning themselves as they should, but it's like, yo, the more you stay in those situations, day two, day 30, two months, five months, you just messing everything up for the next guy up, for the next person up, man or woman, it don't even matter. That's why I'm not dating y'all because y'all are getting recycled. And I'm not trying to be out here in that. I'm trying to be a rare gem, a rare scarce commodity out here when y'all meet me they be like damn yeah he did x y and z because he was actually happy when we met but a lot of y'all are fucking miserable and it's showing and i'm like no no way you're not getting me no one can define these terms we're all doing it. dating talking 
situationships, gray area. We just date for a couple of days. You here for the weekend. I'm here for the weekend. We met in Vegas. Oh, we met out here. Like, who's dating? Who's actually intentionally dating right now? Please, I would really love to know because the people that I meet, either they're trying to figure it out and they're taking a step back from dating, they're celibate, they don't know how to communicate, they go out on dates and they just want to pour you like five to 10 million shots. So you too turned up, you too active in the streets, you got a roster. Make it make sense out here. Like it's really not because I see so many different things. And one of, and I'm not going to get off topic. I was just about to do it. Let's stay right here. Dating is done. Dating is tainted. There's no such thing as dating. Everyone is in the talking stage. Until this person is actually your man or this woman is your lady, your ride or die, everyone is talking. Everyone is being intermingled. Everyone is in, what is it? An entanglement. Everyone's being recycled, right? At least in my opinion, that's how I feel. And this is all based in satire, so take it with a grain of salt. But you can't tell me anything. If she's talking to me, she's talking to him. He's talking to her, her, and her. I don't believe you. Like, yeah. I automatically off top now think you're talking to multiple guys. Especially because if you're not getting the attention from me or I'm not getting consistent energy, respectful energy from you, I'm just going to assume you're putting it into a different direction. And if you don't have a multi-million dollar business, something that I can actively see, you're creative, I see you painting, I see you doing something that advocates for you being as busy as you seem, sure. You can get that one off because I'm like, oh, she's trying to build. She's trying to win. But if I see you always watching my stories, if I see you always making goofy little TikToks, if I see you out in the streets just wilding and not even see because I'm not paying attention to anything. But if you're telling me like, yo, I'm going out tonight with my girls, I'm going to brunch, this, this and that. And then you never hit me up. I'm just going to assume there's a lot of guys in these brunches. I'm going to assume you know, the energy is going to go somewhere else. So that's why I'm like, yo, words don't even matter anymore. Like you just got to show me what your actions. So dating, talking, situation, whatever actions are going to speak. And I hold myself to the same regard. If I'm really trying to wipe you down, I'm really trying to lock in. You're going to know. And that's not if, uh, if he wanted to, he would Nah, It's just, I respect the energy. The energy is given. The energy is reciprocated. Easy. And it's not a transaction because it's not based in financial means. I don't have to buy you a bag for you to know that I'm a good dude. I don't got to pay for your $260 nail spa date that you only took me to because you know it was more expensive just to see that I'm a good guy. It's not going to work like that. Do those other guys like that. Let's just have a communication and conversations when you meet me. You meet me outside. Let's just talk. We can have fun and talk at the same time, but that's the thing. It's just a lot of fun out here. But I did want to speak on it because this may be the reason why a lot of women are taking L's. I'm not going to hold you because the woman that I'm about to show you, she is actively outside in these streets meeting quality men. And you could put that wherever you want on the quality men scale. This guy may not be quality to you, but for the average woman, this guy could probably get their attention in some form, just even from his job title. But we're going to break it down. We're going to look at it in real time. You know, we got to speak on it because that's help me understand. Ladies, drop a comment. If I'm off base in anything that I'm saying, call me out. I would love the feedback. Let's see what's good. The audacity of some men. <laughs> I don't even know how to make a long story short, but like, okay, let's rewind like four or five years ago at this point, I meet a Miami football player Jeez. and he's like, I'm going to fly you out. Come spend a week with me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to fly you out. Come spend a week with me. I'm in the NFL. Okay. This story, this story has no choice, but to go left. Right. I would assume. Right. And I'm like, mm. finally I budge. I'm like, okay, but do you have a girlfriend? Fair question. I think. 
And I'm like, I just want to make sure you don't have a girlfriend. Like, are you sure? And he's like, no, like, I don't have a girlfriend, but I do have a really crazy ex who I have a restraining order against. First sign that this person did not trust their gut instinct. And this is where it goes left. So right, th- right here, this part in the story, this part in the story. Yes, this is where the accountability is now on you. Her. I don't know her name, whatever, but it's on her. Because if I'm a guy, I'm about to link up with you somewhere. Say we about to go link in Columbia. You're like, hey, come out to Columbia. It's me and a couple of my girls. Let's come hang out for the week. Cool. And then I start to asking you questions and you say, oh, my ex knows I'm going to Columbia. And he told me he's coming out there. I'm not going. I'm not going nowhere. I'm sitting my ass down. But no, hey, the story gets better. Okay, whatever. But you don't have a girlfriend. So sure, I'll come. I get there. I literally meet his mom at his condo. Like his mom is the one to greet me. We go to a football game together. Me and his mom are like besties. She's like, oh, I'm so happy he broke up with his ex. Like it was, I was like, ah. His man, his mom is up on game. Let's call a spade a spade. Like guys don't care anymore to introduce you to their parents. I mean, some guys don't. I'm not introducing you to my family, but some guys don't care. And some moms be on board. Dads be on board. They done seen everything come through. This guy's in the NFL. I'm sure his mom meets so many different types of women. And women are, mothers are great. Our mother's not going to greet you with humble, open arms, right? What is she talking about? This person is obviously lost in the sauce, but let's continue to speak on it. This is fun. Okay, cool. I'm down. I should have known it was like a little weird when after his game, the next morning, he like got sick (laughs) and basically like the rest of the time I was there like we didn't really do anything like super fun or like really go out like on a like we went out to eat like not like anywhere nice and I like literally went to a Miami like swim party with his roommates not even him because he was sick okay but when he was like playing video games he was like yeah I'm just here with my girl and when I heard that I was like like also like why are you playing video games while I'm there red flag Anyways, when it gets good. Okay, so he's at football practice the one day. I go shopping. I have nothing better to do. I buy. Yeah, so bear with me as this story continues to go left. But another quality trait. I have nothing to do. I'm going to go shopping. Right? So, fellas, if she's not texting you back, she's with some NFL dude just sitting at his house waiting around, not doing anything. He's sick. And she's shopping and she's ignoring you. So all those DMs you just sent, that 1,000 DM that you sent there is not going to work. Nothing is working out here. The streets are tainted. The streets are tainted because I'm going to assume, I didn't look at her IG. Sometimes I do, but I'm going to assume these women are very attractive. She seems cool. She don't really seem like my speed, but I'm sure she could get done up and look nice and step out and be bagging whoever. So, and guys are easy, so whatever. And it's like, yo, this is why. I don't know where I was going with that, but let's restart the video. A bunch of stuff. So I have my bags there and now I'm like, okay, let me like clean out my purse because I'm leaving tomorrow. And like I threw my boarding pass away, like just like stuff like that. I'm like throwing in these empty shopping bags and he's like, don't worry about it. Like I'll clean it up. Like I'll throw the bags away. Okay, fine. Whatever. (laughs) He takes me to the airport, drops me off, gives me a kiss. Yikes. I'm not off my flight like an hour and I like check my message requests. Like, I don't know why. What made me want to check them? I have a message. Why did I just find your boarding pass in my boyfriend's room? Huh? What? Same time, I get a text message from him. Oh my gosh. My ex-girlfriend just broke into my... Yeah, so this story, I mean, I'm about to cut this video off because even I'm getting bored watching it, but it's like, yo, you already knew what time it is. You're the fly out. You're the pass around. You're the bop, for lack of better words. Man, just flew you out and then got sick the day later. And this is tough. Because this is, he's a wholehearted savage. Wholeheartedly. I'm not taking up for him at all. We already know man's is on savage time. What I'm saying is, and I'll just end the video here because what she's saying, we already know this goes left, whatever. Get into an argument of girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So it's like, yo, if you know you're about to deal with a savage, take some accountability. She's trying to blame the guy. You asked him if he had a girlfriend. He said he had a crazy ex. He's in the NFL and he has a crazy ex and he lives in Miami. Miami isn't that big. They all hang out in about three neighborhoods. Brickell, South Beach, Wynwood, Clearwater, or Edgewater, and then Coral Gables. 
Like, it's four neighborhoods out there. Like, what are we doing here? We already know. So she set herself up already. But what I'm saying is, as women continue to complain about there not being a lot of quality guys out here, just know that woman, she's sucking up a lot of energy of quality guys and tainting the streets because she goes and dates that NFL player. He wastes her time. She goes down to the to the seven guy, the six guy that's average, boosts her ego back up, then goes back out and finds an NBA player. He wastes her time, comes back, dates a guy that's a six, has a nice car, can take her out to a cool spot, boosts her ego back up. Not like it's just the same weird cycle. You can't tell me any differently because I've seen it in real time. I'm from Miami. I know what's up. Like, yo, it's getting different in these streets. It really is. Y'all can't tell me anything differently. You cannot lie to me. I've been there. If you're still here, hit the like button, drop a comment and subscribe. This is the Furious Robinson podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend that we up.